Well, good afternoon, evening, whatever the case may be to everyone. Uh, we have Catherine Shapiro, very happy to have Catherine present uh, on platforms and liability. And then Hong will discuss the paper. We have about, I think Catherine, you have about 40 minutes. I'll, if there, by the way, if there are clarifying questions, everyone, please feel free to ask them in the chat and I'll, you know, I'll bring them to Catherine as needed, but we'll keep, so we'll let her speak and we'll only interrupt if absolutely necessary for clarifying questions. And then we'll have a discussion at the end. So after Hong's discussion. Catherine. Thank you. Forward. Thank you. And I, I do welcome questions, feel free. Uh, to interrupt, my co-author Shinyu is here, and uh, this paper is um, in a relatively early stage, and it's a, a part of a broader project, and we do welcome your feedback on it. Um, so uh, um, platforms create significant benefits uh, for, for all of us, I think, but they also expose people to harm and uh, potential risks. Uh, so the risks that we face when we use online platforms include breaches of privacy, uh, loss of personal data, um, uh, misinformation, cyberbullying, uh, potential hate speech, um, risks of, of fraudulent or unwanted advertising. And so here I have a, a slide of, uh, of pop-ups and Google's Google, um, uh, Google ads. Um, also, with, with platforms that, um, uh, that are retail-oriented, uh, one can run the risk of, of purchasing dangerous or counterfeit products. Uh, this is a picture of a hoverboard, which I've, I've never used, but it looks like it's really fun for the whole family. Uh, but hoverboards can also cause significant damage, and there have been hundreds of cases of hoverboards that, uh, for which uh, you know, there have been fires, uh, while charging, uh, including uh, uh, houses that have burned down. This is, this is one of the examples of a house that burned down here in the United States uh, from, a, from a defective hover, hoverboard. And one of the things that was interesting um, about this hoverboard example is that um, in the last year or two, there have been a couple of lawsuits uh, in California where uh, the, the judge did find Amazon strictly liable for the harms that were caused even though uh, uh, the product, the hoverboard was not produced by Amazon, it was produced by a, a Chinese manufacturer. Moreover, in one of these examples from last spring, the hoverboard did not even, it did not ship through an Amazon fulfillment center. Uh, it was shipped directly from the manufacturer to the customer here in the United States. And I took a, a quote from, uh, from this particular uh, judge's opinion. Um, he said, Amazon is well situated to take cost effective measures to minimize the social costs of accidents. You know, this is an unusual case. Uh, for the most part, Amazon and others have deflected and uh, have, have avoided liability uh, for injuries that stem from the products sold through their platforms. Uh, so second bullet point on the slide here in the United States, uh, platforms, internet platforms, uh, uh, enjoy broad immunity uh, from liability. And this falls into a couple of different categories. Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act immunizes platforms from liability for the content uh, created by participants. And with marketplaces, um, uh, most courts or many courts have found that marketplaces are not traditional sellers and therefore should not be held liable or are not held liable for the goods that are sold by third party uh, vendors. And of course, all of these issues are currently uh, playing out in the courts uh, here in the United States and in the legislatures. Uh, so th this is a, a paper um, that uh, is taking uh, you know, a stab at this, you know, asking should platforms be held liable for the harms suffered by users? I just want to take a little bit of a side trip here, you know, thinking about liability for a more traditional um, uh, modes of business organizations. So if one had a, a magazine or a newspaper that posted an advertisement by say a hitman 
I'm thinking about lawsuits against Soldier of Fortune magazine. This was a, a magazine that would, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, it had, it had all sorts of advertisements, including a hitman advertising his services hired by a magazine reader and then the hitman killed the guy's wife. In those kinds of situations, courts would hold and did hold Soldier of Fortune magazine liable. For bricks and mortar retailers, um, in many courts in the United States, one, if one is victimized by a product, if one is harmed by a defective product, one can sue the various stages of the vertical chain. So one can go after the manufacturer of the product if it was defective and that caused the harm, but one can also go after the distributor and the retailer. And indeed courts have held that if, especially if the manufacturers are judgment proof or bankrupt and cannot pay for the damages, then uh, courts uh, can hold uh, retailers and distributors liable for those damages. And so it is a little bit ironic that, that the protections to victims from, defend, from defective products or, or from you know, dangerous advertising are not afforded the same protections on online platforms as they are in more bricks and mortar or traditional business models. So this is the, the motivation for the paper, you know, thinking about whether uh, platforms should be held liable for the harm suffered by users. Okay, um, let me give you an overview of the paper. We have a baseline model, and then we have uh, two uh, extensions of the baseline model. So in our baseline mod model, we have a two-sided platform, and it's a monopolistic platform. It's providing two basic goods. First, there's a kind of a quasi-public good that users enjoy, perhaps because of same-side network externalities. And then the platform also facilitates interactions between firms and users. Uh, we um, assume that the harmful firm, firms serve two types, harmful and safe. And the harmful firms are going to probabilistically cause higher levels of harm to the users than the safe firms do. Uh, the harmful firms will also potentially enjoy higher interaction benefits from the interactions with these users. Um, the firm, the platform is going to monetize the platform by, by charging the firms an interaction price every time they interact with the user. And importantly, in our baseline model, we're going to assume that the interactions do not require the user's consent. In the following sense, if a user agrees to be on the platform and is enjoying the public good aspect of this platform, then they cannot refuse the interactions with the firms. And so in that sense, our users are like bystanders uh, to the harms that are being caused by the firms. In our model, the platform can take a couple of steps potentially to avoid or prevent harmful interactions. First, the platform can adjust the interaction price by raising prices for firms. It gets firms to remove themselves from the network, from the platform, reducing the harm. And then importantly, if that pricing mechanism doesn't work to deter the harmful firms, our platform can invest to audit and detect and then remove the harmful firms. So these are the two tools that our platform has at its disposal. Okay. So again, we're looking at whether platform liability is necessary and what form it should take. First observation, if the firms themselves have deep pockets and can be held accountable for the harms that they're causing to users, then platform liability will be unnecessary. We can get optimal deterrence by just penalizing and holding liable the firms themselves. However, if the firms are judgment proof and are immune from liability or do not have deep enough pockets to pay for the harms that they're causing to others, then platform liability plays a very important role. Uh, 
First, if the harmful firms are marginal in the sense of Spence 1975, so if the harmful firms are the ones who are on the cusp between participating and not participating on the platform, then platform liability can motivate the platform to deter the harmful firms by raising the price and thus getting them not to participate. Secondly, if the harmful firms are inframarginal, okay, then holding the platform liable can get the platform to engage in auditing to detect and then remove these harmful firms from the platform. Now, whether those harmful firms are marginal or inframarginal is, is endogenous within the model. It's going to depend upon the level of firm liability. If firms in our model are not held liable, if firms are judgment-proof and can escape liability, if the firms are immune from liability, then there's a real risk that there are inframarginal firms that are very harmful. And the only way to get rid of them is by auditing them, detecting them, and then subsequently removing them. Putting liability in the platform serves a very important role. Okay, so that's the baseline model, the baseline model. We extend the baseline model in uh, two directions, which um, I'll also describe in the talk. First, and importantly, we extend it to consider retail platforms. In our baseline model, the victims were bystanders. Uh, the transactions did not require their consent. We introduce um, uh, uh, victims who are customers. So we look at products liability and uh, uh, we have rational consumers, they're sophisticated. Uh, we show that uh, when the victims are consumers and in a contractual relationship with the sellers, then the platform has stronger incentives to deter and remove the harmful firms. You know, the consumers, you can consent to these interactions, and so the consumers will have a higher willingness to pay if harmful firms are excluded. And so there's less of a problem here. Uh, we show that um, uh, platform liability will be lower than in the baseline model. Uh, nevertheless, platform liability will play a very important role. It helps to solve the moral hazard problem on the part of the platform, giving them the incentive to audit and remove harmful firms. Then we do a simple extension to platform competition, where we have two platforms uh, that are, are symmetric, uh, uh, homogeneous. Uh, the firms are single homing. And so these two platforms are competing for, for the firms, which is how they monetize the platform. We show um, that the platforms may have either weaker or stronger incentives to deter and remove harmful firms. Um, so the, the uh, problem of incentives um, and the importance of liability could either be weaker or stronger than in our baseline model. We show that if the harmful firms are marginal, then the optimal platform liability is higher than in the baseline model. We basically need to give these competing platforms an incentive to raise their price more and get those uh, harmful firms to select off of the platform. On the other hand, if the harmful firms are marginal, if they're on, on the margin between joining and not, uh, then optimal platform liability is positive but lower than in the baseline model. Essentially, when the platforms are competing with each other, they become overzealous in their auditing activities. They are kind of trigger happy, trying to audit, detect, and kick firms off the platform. And uh, um, that um, can uh, uh, lead to overexertion of auditing effort. They're not taking into account uh, the rents that are being captured by the firms that they're kicking off the platform. Okay, so that's a summary of the baseline model and our two extensions. Let me talk a bit about the literature. Um, I'm coming from, uh, from a law school, the Harvard Law School, and my, my research is mainly in the law and economics area. This is a paper that fits into the law and economics literature. In the law and economics literature, going back a few decades, uh, uh, people like Stephen Chevelle and others have thought about the role of liability as a mechanism for forcing bad actors to internalize the harms that they're causing to others. Liability is an incentive device. 
to get injurers to internalize the externalities they impose on victims. If victims are bystanders, then strict liability with compensatory damages, making the injurer compensate the victim in full for the harms that are caused can get, get you efficient effort or precautions and also the right activity levels. If victims are consumers, so we're in a world of products liability, then the rationale for liability is actually weaker than before. Uh, in a world where the consumers are purchasing products, consumers have a natural incentive to want to purchase safer products, um, and they're willing to pay a premium for safer products. And so in a well-functioning market, uh, the market will provide consumers with safe and effective products. And so the role for products liability, uh, putting liability on firms will hinge on various imperfections, asymmetric information, or as in Spence 1977, misperceptions on the part of consumers. If consumers systematically misperceive product risks, then products liability can make sense. Okay. Our paper very much ties into what's called the judgment proof problem. It's long been understood that if injurers cannot be held accountable for the harms that they cause, if they can evade liability, or if they're immune, or if they don't have deep enough pockets, then they'll take too little effort and they'll engage in too many risky activities. In those types of situations where there are imperfections, perhaps because of judgment proofness, there's a real role for third parties to be liable. And there's a literature on extending liability to third parties. Uh, I, I worked um, on the issue of gun manufacturer liability with Bruce Hay a couple of uh, decades ago, uh, thinking about whether gun manufacturers should be liable when consumers, while using guns, harm, maim, or kill other people. Uh, others have thought about lender liability. So when a borrower is, is insolvent, think about a, a firm that's gone bankrupt, should the victims be able to go after the lenders? Uh, should, uh, should you be able to go after a, um, a worker's employer if the worker is harming you? So these are all issues about extending liability to, to others. Okay, the paper also bears on the uh, platforms literature. Um, and uh, um, in our model, we assume that uh, the platforms are monetizing by charging the firms, just one side of the platform. And indeed, uh, there's a literature going back uh, a long time that with cross-site externalities, one side may pay nothing. Um, other authors, uh, um, including um, Julian and, and Andre and, and others here, uh, have looked at non-pricing strategies on platforms, uh, including work by Andre on, on excluding sellers, thinking about quality, uh, on one side of the platform and how the platform can play a role in, in helping to cull out bad quality sellers. Uh, control rights, how does one allocate control between uh, sellers and the platform? Um, information management uh, and governance. Uh, so these are just three examples of directions that the literature has been going in more recently. There also are policy pieces uh, very interesting policy pieces on platform liability. Um, to our knowledge, uh, uh, we have not seen other papers that are looking at formal models, thinking about the role and the, the magnitude of platform liability as an incentive device. Okay. So let me talk about the model. Uh, the model is a very, is a very simple one. And uh, uh, it's a two-sided platform. We have a monopolistic platform, P, and then we have the two sides. We're going to call the, the firms, we're gonna denote them by S and the users by B. Later in one of our extensions, the users are buyers um, of, the pro of a product. In our baseline model, the users are not. They're really going to be bystanders in our baseline. Uh, the uh, unit, uh, the, the, there, there's a unit mass of firms and users, and if a firm is participating on the platform, each firm will interact with all of the, all of the users. Okay, 
we ima we're imagining that the platform uh, is providing two goods, a quasi-public good, which uh, for which users will enjoy um, a benefit V, um, perhaps coming from same side network effects among the buyers. And they're also going to be providing opportunities for firm user interactions. The users are going to join the platform for free. That's an assumption in our model. Uh, and so they can join and they enjoy the, the benefit V. And then the firms are going to pay the platform an interaction price P. Okay, so again, users are bystanders. For the time being, their consent for interactions is not required. The firms are of two types, um, harmful and safe. H is for harmful. And the fraction of harmful types is lambda. We're going to assume that the harmful types enjoy higher gross interaction benefits. Um, alpha H is bigger than alpha L. This is not essential for our results, um, but assuming that does give us uh, cases where the high types, where the harmful types are inframarginal. So what this is implying is that without any platform liability, I'm sorry, without any firm liability, these harmful firms are going to be active on the platform and auditing will be necessary. It's very easy to generalize our, our model, however, to alpha H being smaller than alpha L. It just limits the, the interests of the model in that case. We assume that the high types, the harmful types are going to impose higher interaction losses on the users. So every time uh, one of these firms actually interacts with a user, there's a probability theta that an accident will arise. And the harmful types cause accidents with higher frequency. Theta H is greater than theta L. Okay, we have four assumptions. And this is to really um, focus us in on what we think are the interesting cases to explore, at least at, at, at first blush. Our first uh, assumption there is just saying that the, um, uh, the users are willing to join the platform. Uh, even if there is no liability, even if, if these users have to fully bear their own harms and, and these high type firms, the harmful firms participate, these users are still willing to participate. Assumption A1 is very important. This is saying that the low types, the safe firms are socially efficient, okay? Alpha L minus theta L D is greater than zero. Okay, the interaction benefit for the, for the firm is bigger than the harm, the expected harm for the user. However, for the harmful firms, they are socially inefficient. The interaction benefit alpha H is smaller than the expected harm for these users. And so in an ideal world, in a first best world, we would get rid of these harmful firms. They should not be participating on the platform. Okay, uh, the second assumption, uh, well, assumption A2, um, that's an assumption that guarantees that our platform will remain in operation under our parameter values, even if the platform was held fully liable for the harms. Um, so it's just to be able to narrow down the set of cases we're looking at. And then finally, the third assumption we're making is that they're not a tremendous number of harmful firms. The reason we're making that assumption is because if it did not hold, there would be cases where our platform, our monopoly platform may want to specialize in just the harmful firms. It may want to get rid of the safe firms and just monetize through, through a large number of harmful firms. I think that's theoretically curious and interesting and all that, but it's not as policy relevant. And so to streamline our model, we, we made the assumption uh, A3. And so the platform, if it exists, it's going to serve the safe firms and it may or may not serve the harmful firms. Okay. Um, liability. We um, are assuming in the model that uh, if users suffer harm, then there's liability. The uh, responsible firm and the platform are going to be forced to pay damages and compensate the user. WS is the liability on the firm. WP is the liability on the platform. And we're going to assume that the sum of the two is smaller than or equal to D, the overall harm that's been caused to the user. That constraint is actually not binding um, in, our, in our model, uh, but it's, uh, that, that's what we're assuming. Uh, we're assuming it's a strict liability rule. So when harm occurs, 
uh, liability is, is applied. Uh, there may be practical constraints on the liability on the firms and the users. Um, in particular, when we think about internet platforms, um, oftentimes uh, the, the perpetrators, the firms that are causing harm, uh, um, it's hard to hold them liable. They may be judgment proof. They may be fly by night. It may be hard to even identify exactly who caused that harm or, or to prove causality in a court of law. So I think the practical constraints are that uh, firms may be judgment proof and immune from liability. That's when it's going to be very important uh, to hold the platform liable. Um, okay. The allocation of net interaction surplus. So for a type I firm, the net interaction surplus is alpha I minus theta ID. That's divided up among the three players. The platform's getting a chunk of it. They're getting the interaction price minus whatever the platform is held liable for, theta I WP. The firm is going to get its benefit alpha I, but they're also going to be held liable for WS and they pay a price P per interaction to the platform. And then the user, well, the user may have some uncompensated harms. Um, so if WS and WP, if those are, are relatively small, the user is going to be suffering losses from the interactions. Our platform, really importantly, has an ability to detect and block harmful firms. It's an imperfect monitoring device. They can engage in costly auditing where they can detect a high type with probability E between zero and one. Uh, they are going to have convex effort costs um, where the cost uh, of no effort is zero, uh, but then it's convex and they're never going to uh, achieve perfect uh, detection. We're also assuming in our baseline model that there are no false positives, that they do not falsely detect the safe firms, although that's a, a straightforward um, extension and we have an extension section where we do uh, show that um, how that affects our results. Okay. Catherine, sorry, can I, yes. can I ask a, just a quick clarifying question? So for users, also just to give you a break in the middle. Uh, sure. For, for users, uh, just be clear, they only get value V standalone from the platform. It doesn't matter how many or with which seller they interact with. Is that is that correct? That is correct. We streamlined our framework. So the the users no, treat no them benefit. as homogeneous. Yes, and there's no marginal consumer. We're imagining that they're they're all participating That's here. Okay. We also have, Shinyu and I have also considered variations of, on our model where there's a marginal consumer or a marginal user as well. And we've done some preliminary modeling of the network externalities among the users. That you know, adds complication to the model, um, but the basic effects that we're going to be teasing out here, we think are um, um, are, are fundamental and would apply in these richer frameworks. Right. What, what, we just, what I just said is true for this model with, with, um, uh, with bystanders. When we have the users being consumers, uh, then uh, the value they get does depend on who they interact with. Yeah, that's what I was referring to. Okay, that's fine. Yes. So it's better to think of maybe the model here. Should we think of it as something like a content platform or something like that? And maybe, although, even, yeah, and maybe the, the afterwards with users who make the purchase decision, it's more like the marketplace, an e commerce I think marketplace. That's, I think that's right. So I'm, one could interpret this as being so many different things, but one might think about a, uh, um, you know, if you want to think about a search engine like Google as being like a platform, people are getting benefits from engaging in searches, and yet they could also potentially be harmed uh, if their data is breached uh, or if they kind of inadvertently click on something. Uh, so, so it could be that. It could be. It could be Facebook. We haven't. You know, we do have the harmful types being firms and the victims being users. But we could adapt this to also think about perhaps same side harms, where we have one group of users on Facebook who are influencers, 
and potentially monetizing it through, through contracts with advertisers. And then the other group of users like, like you know, my, my mother-in-law and other people that use Facebook all the time, you know, these are the potential victims of these kinds of activities. I, I do want to mention here, and maybe this is a good time, our bystander model would also apply to retail platforms. If the users are naive consumers and do not understand that the products that they purchase are harmful. And uh, so, and we, we kind of unpack this in the later section of the paper. But the point here is that these, the users are not adjusting. Kind of the prices that they're paying here in this context zero, they're not adjusting for the harm or the real harms that they're facing. Okay. Just a quick note, you probably like it's 903, so I guess about 10 minutes. All righty. All righty, I can do it. Okay. So the timing of the model. Very simple timing. The platform first sets the price P, then the firms learn their types and decide whether to attempt to join the platform. Next, in stage three, the platform will choose its effort, an audit, and then get rid of any detected H types. And then the firms and the users interact with each other. The interaction benefits um, are, are realized, and then if they're accidents, the, the victims, the users can sue the firm and the platform for damages. At the bottom of the slide, I have the uh, first and the second best benchmark. In the first bench, best benchmark, uh, we don't have any auditing at all. We would simply block the H types from participating on the platform. Only the L types would participate. There's a second best benchmark. It may not be possible to totally exclude these harmful firms. They may be lurking there anyway. And in that case, auditing is necessary. And so in the second best benchmark, the, the, the platform, it really should be engaging in auditing effort where the marginal benefit, the marginal benefit being the social harm associated with a harmful firm, the social harm is alpha H minus theta HD, right? This is, these are wasteful, socially wasteful, um, interactions, but that is equal to the marginal cost. So that second best benchmark is very important. And we're going to compare what happens uh, um, uh, when the platform is left to its own devices. Okay. So um, now we're going to solve the model. Um, first participation of the firms. Uh, a type I firm will seek to participate, it will want to join the platform when its profit per interaction are positive. Okay, what you should notice about that expression is that, well, first of all, if W, um, first of all, um, uh, that the, if WS is equal to zero, if the firms are not held liable, then the harmful firm is going to be marginal. Um, I'm sorry, the low type, the, the safe firm is going to be marginal. If the firms are not held liable, there's going to be a real problem because these harmful firms are going to want to join the platform. More specifically, depending upon the firm liability, the harmful firms may either have higher rents or lower rents than the safe firms. And I have there an expression, this W hat, that's the level of firm liability where the rents of the two types of firms are equal. When WS is small, so the firms are very judgment proof, they're not held liable, then the L types of firms are marginal. The L types will join the platform. If they do, then the H types will join too. And so we need auditing to get rid of the H types. If on the other hand, the firms are only moderately judgment proof, if WS is bigger than W hat, then the harmful firms are marginal. The platform can deter the harmful firms by simply raising the price and getting rid of them, kind of pricing them out of the market. Auditing is not necessary in that case. I'm going to divide the analysis into these two cases. First, when WS is smaller than W hat. So th this is the case where the firms are very judgment proof. You cannot hold them fully liable for the harms that they're causing. The safe firms are marginal. The platform is going to set the price to extract the surplus from the safe firms. High types of firms are gonna to wanna to join the platform. This is problematic. Okay. Will the platform want to audit and remove the harmful firms? Well, maybe it will, and maybe it won't. 
think about the platform's profit function. You know, the platform is going to be thinking about the profit margins it's earning on the interactions with the safe firms and the harmful firms. That first part of the expression, P star minus the H with WP, that's the profit that the platform is getting from hosting these harmful firms. That could be a positive number. In particular, if the platform is not held liable, if WP is equal to zero, the platform is going to welcome, it's going to embrace these harmful firms with open arms because it can monetize from them, it can get money out of them. The platform will not audit. If on the other hand, the platform is held sufficiently liable, then the platform will be losing money on the harmful firms. And then the platform does have an incentive to audit. E star will be bigger than zero. However, the audit intensity may or may not be socially optimal. The platform may underinvest in auditing or it may overinvest in auditing. And this is the most important slide, I think, in the talk, because it's really highlighting the divergence between the private incentive of the platform and the social incentive, what we want as a society. The platform is going to audit up until the point where the marginal benefit to the platform from auditing that is the losses from having a, a high type firm on the platform equals the marginal cost. On the other hand, this is not what's necessarily socially optimal. Society cares about alpha H minus theta H WP. Okay. That main expression in the middle of the slide is showing the divergence. We can write the first order condition for the platform in the following form. What this is showing is that the platform's incentive may be too high or too low to audit. The platform is not paying attention to the uncompensated harms to the users. That's the middle term. The platform is also not thinking about the information rents when it kicks off a harmful firm from the platform. So auditing will confer a positive externality on the users, but a negative externality on the firms who are removed. And so platform liability can, you know, it can lead to auditing incentives that are too low or socially excessive. Okay. We also then take a look at the case where, where the firms are held more liable, where WS is large. And we show, you know, in this case, the high types, the harmful types are marginal. Auditing is unnecessary. The platform can get rid of them by simply raising the price. It can price them out of the market. But will the, will the platform price them out of the market? Well, maybe it will, and maybe it won't. The platform will want to accommodate the harmful firms if the revenues that it gains from accommodating the harmful firms are bigger than the information rents that are being captured by the inframarginal safe firms. And so the platform's incentive is too low. What do we get out of this? Well, we get that platform liability may well be necessary. In particular, when the firms are very judgment proof, then what we want to do is we want to hold the platform partially liable, not fully liable. And in particular, the sum of liability for the firm and the platform is less than fully compensatory. It's less than D. The reason that this is being done here is because having it be fully compensatory would lead to overzealous auditing by the platform. We want to prevent the platform from auditing too much. The platform you know, is not caring about rents when it kicks firms off the platform. We also show that um, in this middle range, we do want platform liability because we need to give the platform an incentive to raise the price to exclude or deter the other, uh, the, the harmful firms. Um, can I take a couple more minutes, Andre? Yes. Yeah, okay. Sure. Okay. So, um, uh, I think it's important, I'm going to skip that, we're going to go to the retail platforms. So with retail platforms, our, our users are consumers, they're voluntary participants. And we look at sophisticated consumers, and so um, the price that they're, being, they're paying for products on the platform reflects their expected losses. In the equilibrium, and I have it down here at the bottom of the slide, the firms are going to there's a pooling equilibrium. In fact, there's no separating equilibrium. There cannot be a separating equilibrium because um, no consumer would deal with a harmful firm because it's a socially wasteful transaction. In the pooling equilibrium, the price paid by the consumer to the firm 
uh, is going to reflect the consumer's beliefs about the uncompensated harm. Consumers are forward-looking and rational. They expect to be able to bring lawsuits and get compensated, but maybe not in full. So consumers are adjusting the price that they're paying. And as a consequence, uh, the price that the platform can get from the firms, the interaction price, is also going to reflect the uncompensated harm to those consumers. Importantly, the price in this model of retail platforms is lower than when users are bystanders. P-Star is lower because we need to get the, the consumers on board. This is important in our model because the lower price means that the platform is going to be more zealous in auditing to get rid of firms. There's not much of a, as much of a profit margin from keeping firms on the platform. We have a similar expression showing the divergence between the private platform incentives to audit and the social incentives. It looks very similar to what we have before, except now the externality on the consumers is relative to the consumer's expectations. So when the platform is making its audit uh, investment, it's not taking into account the additional harm beyond the user's expectations. And so that is going to uh, change. Um, it's, going to, uh, it's going to increase the level of effort that the platform puts in, but we still get that the platform may be engaging in socially insufficient or excessive auditing. We get interesting diver uh, differences from the baseline model. Uh, liability in this extension is smaller than before. Um, uh, that's true when the firms are judgment-proof. Firms are judgment-proof. We don't need as much platform liability. Interestingly, we find that the liabilities are complements to each other. When uh, the firm liability increases, we want to make the platform more liable. Um, that's coming through the pricing mechanism. Um, we also have find a broader range of parameter values for which platform liability is not necessarily necessary at all. Platforms incentives are more aligned with the users. And then finally, we look at platform competition where they're competing for, uh, for single homing um, uh, firms. And what we show there, just to wrap it up very quickly, is that with competition, the interaction prices are lower. Uh, since the interaction prices are lower, the audit level is going to be higher. Uh, the firms are bearing the full liability for the harms to users, but the price they're getting from the interactions is smaller. They're gonna be more zealous than before. Now this could be a good thing or a bad thing, given that in our benchmark model, the auditing could be insufficient or excessive. What we find is that platform competition uh, may improve matters or it could make matters worse. And, and that basically wraps it up. I'm gonna kind of uh, skip ahead um, to my conclusion slide. Uh, platform liability um, uh, can be an important uh, uh, way uh, of getting uh, platforms to internalize potential harms to users. This is especially true when the firms or those that are causing the harm are judgment proof. It gives platforms an incentive to raise interaction prices to deter harmful firms. It gives them the incentive to audit and remove firms. We've shown some of the nuances that platform liability can depend on, on whether, the buy, whether the users are bystanders or whether they're voluntary uh, consumers. Uh, we show how it might depend on, on intensity of competition. Um, just taking a step back, you know, there are broader applications of our model beyond internet platforms. Our model you know, could be applied to other types of intermediaries when there are judgment proof problems and when there's capability uh, of the intermediary to detect and remove harmful actors. We do believe that our, our model is, is very relevant for current platform policy, especially given that bad actors are often insolvent or difficult to pin down and hold accountable. Future avenues will include um, one-sided platforms, uh, competition among asymmetric platforms, uh, indemnification, thinking about side contracting, whether they can allocate between themselves, the firm and the platform, 
um, uh, in advance. Um, so these are directions that we've started to go into and uh, we look forward to your feedback. Thanks.